Good morning. So 10 years ago, uh, my film team traveled to Ecuador. And we made a short film called Barrio de Paz, Peace Town. And we met a woman there named Nelsa Curbelo. And her story was foundational to my work as a curriculum writer and as an educator working in schools with teachers and students. And I learned how one human story can have a tremendous impact in education. So let me tell you about Nelsa. Nelsa is a former nun who founded an organization called Serpas, Being Peace, in Guayaquil, Ecuador. Guayaquil is the most populous city in Ecuador, with three and a half million people. And at the time, the gang youth and the violence there was really high. Nelsa is a proponent of nonviolence, and she has worked as a mediator in armed conflicts throughout South America. She's also the main character in Barrio de Paz. And the film documents her story, how she helped transform the gang youth in Guayuquil by reflecting back to them what they needed the most, the need to be loved. Which also reminds me about yesterday Shukila's message about love as well. In the film, Nelsa says, nothing is more revolutionary than love. Love is the greatest power. Love is more powerful than violence, more powerful than the atomic bomb. And love is the power to transform lives, change cities, and the whole world. Only love has this deep, creative power. So through Nelsa's work, most of the gangs in Guayuquil have disarmed and agreed to abandon violence, and the gangs have become positive members in, in the community. Uh, she helped them channel their needs of unity, structure, and love into empowered participation within society. So as the director of a multimedia education organization, Nelsa Sori helped me see and reveal what kind of stories we want to tell as filmmakers. She, we want to help schools by exposing students to people like Nelsa and ask questions about the world while relating to students' lives. Because Nelsa is an innovator with the goal to serve youth in society. And I think that everyone in this room today is a part of that narrative. I'm going to show you a trailer or a short little video about some of the work that we've done over the last decade and the kind of narrative that we're telling. People will change, the weather will change. If there's no more Simon, there will be no more work I know. Each Syrian family is thinking about someone who's left behind. Y porque en general se culpa a los jóvenes de ser los ocasionadores de los conflictos cuando ellos son en realidad y un espejo de la sociedad. Para cambiar la sociedad nosotros estamos apostando a que los jóvenes sean los artífices de ese cambio. Freedom before I came here was just another word. I'd never been to prison before. Mom is our last fluent speaker now. Come out to Chasi. For the last couple of years, we haven't had adequate water. We're struggling. Yes, I'm living in, in an area where, you know, I'm prone to hurricanes. But nowadays, who's not prone to hurricanes? Whenever I see a problem or invent a new solution, I immediately think, well, how does nature do that? This is nature's blueprint. There is some deep internal intelligence, some almost non-verbal narrative which nourishes us, which has its own natural wellspring.
So how can we use emotional storytelling in education? It begins with the human experience. As a parent of two teenagers, I am constantly reminded of the impact that video and media has on our lives, both for education and for entertainment, because a video today is just a click away. This creates challenges and opportunities that we have never seen before, and we need to meet students in this digital landscape. So I'm interested how we can utilize the accessibility of media to provide ways to go much deeper into learning. So a meaningful video that takes meta-global issues like climate change, migration, and indigenous rights can put a human face to an issue. It can make the issue relatable and re relevant. And students' lives, they can learn in more profound ways. And I think we all can agree that this is critical today when the growth of media and technology is speeding up and when media is constantly being questioned and the validity of media is questioned all the time. So I'm gonna share three ways in which emotional storytelling can help schools change. And the first one is um, that it can build empathy. This is a theme that we've seen over the course of the last three days. So stories have the potential to explore the human experience, what it means to laugh and cry, what it means to be afraid, um, to create and innovate. So a good story can take us on a journey. What it touches us in a documentary film is the emotional quality that comes through the characters. And it's often is the vulnerability that comes, that's present when the emotional narrative. So if a character in a documentary film isn't being vulnerable, they aren't letting you into their world. So the basic human emotions such as grief and uncertainty are often covered in documentary films because these are the, the emotions and these are things that are the documenting the changes that are happening all around the world. So a film can reveal how a person has overcome adversity by embracing their vulnerability. And this is a powerful narrative to share in schools today because it provides an entry point that everyone can relate to because everyone is human. Everyone is vulnerable and has the, the face, the fears and emotions and vulnerabilities that we all face. Think about it, especially today when students are coming of age and we're, they're living in a society where that society does not reflect a vulnerability. Um, you know, people depicted in today in social media are these superhero human beings that can do anything. And these are the images that our students are seeing all the time, again and again. So I have a 14-year-old daughter, and every day I'm confronted by the social and emotional challenges that she faces and the vulnerability she feels. And the key is to embrace the vulnerability, to echo and to share it. So teachers are using powerful stories to create a container in a classroom through a curri curriculum, asking questions, using the emotional connections for growth, learning, and change. And the student's whole self can be included. Empathy, as we all know, also includes and builds character skills. In his book, Emotional Intelligence, Daniel Goleman says that, he explores this and says that Empathy can lead to caring altruism, to compassion, and that seeing things from another's perspective can break down stereotypes and breeds, and breeds tolerance. So five years ago, I worked with teachers in the Chicago Public School District of 400,000 students. And Chicago has the highest murder rate capital of the United States. Just this past little year alone, they've seen 500 murders. So I shared Barrio de Paz with the Chicago teachers and they expressed because the gang youth were experiencing, and Guayuquil were experiencing similar challenges that the Chicago t students were experiencing, the Chicago students empathized. And because the issue of gang youth and violence was articulated from a different place, a different culture and a different language, they were able to connect in a different way. And then the Chicago teachers used the film to create a school event and this began a conversation about violence with parents, teachers, and the whole community. This provides a foundation for school ethos and connection. The second way is that emotional storytelling can create a cultural awareness. 
I've always found beauty in learning about the world's cultures. There's a beauty and dignity when witnessing indigenous cultures' deep connection to life through food, language, and the land. Speaking of the food, last night, just want to say, I think we should give a round of applause to all of the, the chefs that have provided us with this amazing cuisine over these last three days. And I don't know about you guys, but that, those cloudberries last night on the, the milk ganache was pretty phenomenal. Let's give the chefs a round of applause. Um, this is really important in schools to share cultures because I think, especially in Western cultures, they need more exposure to this. So about 10 years ago, my film team made a short film called A Thousand Sons, um, which documented the Gamo people of the African Rift Valley, who've been farming sustainably for 10,000 years. And in the beginning of the film, two indigenous men are seeing on top of a New York City sky riser. They'd come to New York for the first time, and they're looking down at the city, and they look at each other, and they say, where is the land? They were completely confused that people could just be living on concrete. Because the Gamo people lives in natural accordance to their environment, to the land. Because everything's connected. And students need to witness this today because stories are a way of echoing how life is interconnected. Stories which highlight indigenous cultures around the world can also play a very unique role in schools. And due to many factors, global cultures obviously are changing rapidly, and students need to learn about this. this they can help understand their, their world and help them find their place within it. So when students view a story about an indigenous woman who's the last speaker of her language, they can go into the themes of identity and cultural preservation into their own lives. And when students view a film about a Syrian refugee who's fleeing their home, they can explore themes of resilience and human rights and connection to their own home. And then after watching a film about the Gamo people, they can explore the themes of modernization, uh, traditional knowledge, and the value of old versus new. So cultural stories remain powerful through time across continents with the potential to transcend boundaries. I think, isn't it important now more than ever to expose schools to the world and embrace diversity? I think all of us are going to say yes to that. But at the root of it all, these stories implore that students embrace their own humanness. Is this true, Lassa? I have three minutes left? Okay. I don't know how that happened. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to go a little quicker than usual here. Um, so the third reason is interdisciplinary connections. Um, I'll now just share quickly one um, middle school Earlier this year, I worked with a middle school and their history team at my son's school. And the seventh grade curriculum focused on the history of Islam. And the teacher said that now students have more questions about Islam and how it relates to current events. So she turned the unit into a larger project. And this is an example of something that they came up with. So they did a PSA project, a project, um, public service announcement project. And this is just a postcard that they came up with. And this, I, to my surprise, later on in the year, the students did a uh, musical, Fiddler on the Roof. And so the themes of those were very similar. And this was a poem that, the, that was also part of that PSA project that students created. So I'm going to share another short uh, trailer. And this is our film that we're just working on now called Earthrise, because we're talking about relationships, but they can also extend beyond ourselves. From CBS New York in color, Face the Nation, a spontaneous and unrehearsed news interview with the Apollo 8 astronauts. You three gentlemen were the first men to escape from the Earth, so to speak. I'm sure you're going to be asked this over and over again, but I think everybody wonders about it. Is there some kind of a psychological wrench 
when you see the Earth actually receding, when you're alone in the universe, is there some kind of a feeling where, which might seriously affect people who are not like you? What they should have sent was poets, because I don't think we captured in its entirety the grandeur of what we had seen. We were all awestruck by uh, the beauty of the Earth and its color against the blackness of space. It gave a contrast. It said that, hey, here are people looking back at what is our home. Everything we held dear, our families, our country, everything we held dear was back on that blue planet. So zipping through here, I just want to finish and say that kind of going back to what Nelsa was saying in her film, Barrio de Paz, in the film, she also says that everything in society tells us to distrust others. She says, I think it's time, it's the other way around, that we need to profoundly trust in those around us and the potential of who they are. So emotional storytelling can help schools adapt to our fast-changing world, and they can build a moral compass for the future of our young leaders. Thank you.